with 14 starters gone from the 1989 team that finished ranked number three in the nation. Coach Bobby Bowden would have some mighty big gaps to fill in his 15th year as head man for the tribe. But with great talent and some spectacular recruiting, the Seminoles don't rebuild, they reload. After the smoke had cleared, FSU would have a 10-2 record, including a fourth straight gigging of intrastate rival Florida, a blockbuster bowl victory over Penn State, and a number four national ranking. Along the way, Bowden would notch his 200th career victory in a 42-3 demolition of LSU. Names like Casey Weldon, Lawrence Dossey, Amp Lee, and Edgar Bennett, to name but a few, would rev up the Warrior offensive machine to over 5,000 total yards. FSU finished as the nation's fifth highest scoring team, rampaging through opponents for 40 points a game. Weldon finished as the country's number three rated quarterback, and consensus All-American Lawrence Dossey caught a team-high 65 passes for nearly 1,000 yards. Defensively, the finest freshman in the land wore the garnet and gold, as number 55 Marvin Jones led FSU in tackles for the season with 133. With help from sack master Tony Moss, bandit Howard Dinkins, Kirk Carruthers, and the Sky Patrol secondary that gave up less than 100 yards per game through the air, the Tribe defense made the transformation from untested to downright menacing. These young warriors cut their teeth in September, and by season's end were chewing up the opposition. This is the 90 Knowles in Review. A blockbuster season. Sweltering Tallahassee evening, a sellout crowd packs Dope Campbell Stadium to usher in a new decade of Florida State football. Coach Bobby Bowden's Seminoles would unveil a surprisingly balanced and conservative offensive attack against an East Carolina team trying to become the first in school's history to defeat Florida State. In his first role as a starter, junior quarterback Brad Johnson completes 20 of 28 passes for 187 yards. Tribe ball carriers pound out another 200 on the ground. I feel with a little more time, a little more game experience, this young team that we have will be successful in the future. After yielding an early seven points, the Seminoles march to their first pay dirt of the 90s. Sophomore Amp Lee shows why he is the number one FSU tailback in 1990 as he swashbuckles all the way to the Buccaneer Five. One play later, Johnson, behind great protection, again finds Dossey, who makes the spectacular soaring grab. On the ensuing series, the Tribe defense reigns supreme. Outside linebacker Howard Dinkins races in for the 10-yard sack. Then junior Kirk Carruthers plunders the pirate option and seizes the booty. But the Buck defense stiffens, and Richie Andrews is called on to put the tribe on top. In 
the second quarter, the Pirates are on the move. ECU has six points in mind, but free safety Leon Fowler has other ideas. After East Carolina ties it with a field goal, Johnson directs the Knolls on an 80-yard drive. Junior fullback Paul Moore shows that he is a force to be reckoned with. First and ten from the four, Johnson fakes, then finds a wide open Edgar Bennett as the Seminoles go ahead to stay. On ECU's next possession, true freshman Marvin Jones makes one of his ten tackles on the evening. Then John White and Tommy Henry enjoy a pirate sandwich. East Carolina is forced to punt, and sophomore flash Terrell Buckley goes 63 yards to put Florida State up by 14. They got the wall, Buckley, a loser tackler. He's down the sideline, 40, 35, 30. Buckley makes his trip to the 20, hurdles to the 10. Buckley with five, touchdown, Terrell Buckley. Well, the first thing is when I, after I catch him, score. It all calls, run over people and fake them out, outrun them. That, that just score. That's all that's in my mind. In the third quarter, Buckley finds a deflected gift and shows his gratitude by slashing 28 yards to the FSU 43. FSU then embarks on a nine-play power drive. Johnson fires his third TD pass of the game to an unmolested Edgar Bennett. Leon Fowler sees to it that it's three and out for the Bucks. On their next series, Brad Johnson hits tight end Reggie Johnson. The Johnson and Johnson connection, and an ECU defender gets powdered in the process. One play later, Lawrence Dossie shows he has the heart of an All-American. Brad Johnson takes it the final yard for the big Seminole Bowl. Both teams would add another touchdown, including this Bennett 10-yard Pirate stop, his third score of the game. The 1990 debut of the young and talented Warriors is a smash. In front of their second home sellout in as many games, Florida State hosts Division I 2A powerhouse Georgia Southern. The pesky Eagles try to make a game of it, but are no match for another balanced Seminole offensive onslaught. Brad Johnson completes 15 of 23 passes, good for 170 yards, including a 13-yard scoring toss to a diving Shannon Baker. Junior Casey Weldon also gets into the act, firing 7 of 13 for 46 yards and another TD pass to an acrobatic Baker. The offensive line opens massive holes for tribe ball carriers who churn out 250 yards. Amp Lee twice slashes in for scores. And true freshman Sean Jackson is nothing short of sensational, ripping through the Georgia Southern defense for 112 yards on only seven carries. The Florida State defense grounds the eagle attack. The vaunted flex bone option can muster up only 161 total yards against the fired up Warriors. Heralded fullback Joe Ross is stopped cold gaining 14 yards in 11 carries. Kirk Carruthers and company make it a very long evening for quarterback Raymond Gross. On special teams, Terrell Buckley works some more magic. The 
Seminoles go 2-0 and hand Georgia Southern their worst defeat in school history, 48-6. Game three finds the Seminoles in New Orleans, Louisiana to face Tulane University. The Tribe defense would slow the Green Wave offense to a trickle, while the FSU offense would pile up 441 yards of total offense on the turf. Tulane starts out with some Miller time, but Bill Reagans and Marvin Jones crash the party. After a short punt, quarterback Brad Johnson and company march downfield. From the 38 of the lane, Brad Johnson will drop back to throw on first down. Being pushed out of the pocket, rolling toward his right. Johnson gets the pass away. It is caught by Dossie, and he has a gain to the 31-yard line. On fourth and one from the two-lane 29, Bobby Bowden takes an early gamble. Seminoles need a yard. Hand off to Bennett. Bennett finds daylight to the 20. Bennett to the 15, to the 10. Bennett to the 5, to the one-yard line. And he's tripped up from behind. Ampley caps off the eight-play drive with a hard-earned one-yarder. <laughs> Tulane then mounts a counterattack. On the line of scrimmage, just shy of the Seminole 14. A quick snap, drops back, fires the pass. It is intercepted by Buckley at the one-yard line. Terrell Buckley turns back the wave at the one with his second interception of the season. I think that's the most encouraging thing about the game was our defense. Uh, in other words, Tulane does have an excellent passing offense, and they run. They and they were running. They were average, getting 200 yards running a game too. Uh, so. They are an offensive team that can explode and really get the points up there. And the fact that for 58 minutes we shut them down with nothing, I, I was very encouraged with that and really wanted to maintain them, wanted to keep the shutout. With the score still 7 to nothing in the second quarter, quarterback Casey Weldon enters the fray. Seminoles move toward our right. Toss sweep comes to Amp Lee. Lee waits for the block to develop. He makes a nice cut. He's to the 50-yard line. Lee was running sideways. From there, the Weldon aerial assault continues. Throws it to the far side, and there's Matt Fryer with a catch at the 13-yard line. But penalties stall the drive, and Richie Andrews nails a 24-yarder to make it 10 to nothing. The young warrior defenders make the shutout stand going into the locker room. Coach Bowden came out and you know he said, "Hey, this is a team that have good athletes. They're going to move the ball a little bit," and uh, they did move the ball a little bit. You know, we kept our poise. And, you know, came, came out there and we had to apply the heat. We applied it strong. In the third quarter, it's Brad Johnson's turn to come out firing. And he'll play fake and drop to throw. Gets a little time. Now he throws it across the middle and he's got a connection to Matt Fryer. First down. Will play fake. Swings the ball out. He's got Bennett. Bennett to the 35 to the 30. Bennett down the sideline. Stays in bounds to the 20. Bennett to the 10. Bennett to the 5. <laughs> Touchdown, Florida State. On first and 10 from the two lane 44, the Green Wave blitzes. And Edgar Bennett takes the short toss and shows why he may be the most versatile fullback to don the garnet and gold. Andrews converts, and it's FSU by 17. On Tulane's next possession, junior linebacker Howard Dinkins puts a stick on Terrence Strickland. And quarterback Deron Smith can't come up with first down yardage. After the punt, Johnson finds Dossie for 25 yards. The sixth catch of the game for the senior from Dothan, Alabama. The Knolls advance to the Green Wave 14, where on fourth and four, the Warriors go for it. On the 15th play of the Mega Drive, Johnson plunges for six, and it's now a comfortable 24 to nothing lead for the Seminoles. 
the Tulane game was, was a big game for us from the standpoint that it was our, our first road trip and, and we were playing uh, in the Dome in New Orleans. Uh, in the first half, things were pretty slow because uh, they had bad field position and they controlled the ball a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of the time. The second half, we really picked things up, especially in the third quarter, and, and uh, we stayed away from turnovers and, and made some big plays, and, and uh, we ended up scoring 31 points in the game, and, and we were just real efficient. We didn't have any turnovers, and, and uh, we moved the chains real well. In the fourth quarter, the FSU defense hangs tough in the Big Easy. FSU's shutout bid is lost late in the game as Tulane manages two quick scores. Florida State adds one with two minutes left as Weldon finds sophomore Eric Terrell, who makes his first Seminole catch a memorable one. FSU wins 31 to 13, and the nation's longest winning streak is alive and well at 13. Week four finds the number two ranked Seminoles back in Tallahassee to face the Hokies of Virginia Tech, a team that Bobby Bowden has never lost to. In a wild seesaw battle in front of more than 60,000 fans, the Florida State defense would be called upon to pull this one out of the fire and extend the win streak to 14. Coach Bowden opens his bid for win number 199 with some patented trickery. With the ball comes Shannon Baker to the near side. He's to the 30. Baker to 35 to the 40. He is to the 45-yard line. Eight plays later, Richie Andrews drills the 43-yarder, and FSU strikes first. On Texan suing possession, Marvin Jones, affectionately referred to as Shade Tree by his teammates, hammers a hokey. Fourth and long, Tech gives it up. Here's the kick and a good one by Boshier. Backpedaling is Buckley all the way to the 10. He'll try to bring it to the near side. Looks for the wall to develop. There it is. He finds daylight to the 30. Buckley cuts it to the near side to the 40. Buckley to the 50, and Buckley is written out of bounds at the 44 of Virginia Tech. One guy to beat, and that was the only guy that could stop him. Chris Boshier, the punter. The Tribe can't do anything with a good field position, and Virginia Tech gets the ball back. For one play, that is. He throws it up in the air long. It is downfield, and it's picked off! Intercepted! Florida State picks it off. Tommy Henry, an over-the-shoulder catch as Gurr laid it out of the post pattern, didn't have a receiver close, and Tommy Henry comes up with his first interception. May have twisted an ankle, but FSU takes over. From the FSU 27, Baker and Dossie work the reverse pass to perfection. Shannon Baker delivers a bullseye that would make Dan Marino proud. But on fourth and one from the Tech 15, a pass that should have been caught introduces a hokey horror show. And before you can say upset in the making, Florida State is down 21 to three. We made some mistakes in that ball game, which are because of inexperience that we've got to correct. Over pursuit, uh, uh, you're, you're really just basic football. We're, we're not as good fundamentally right now as we were a year ago. I think we got more good players than we had a year ago, but they're not as fundamentally sound, there's no doubt about it. Bobby Bowden would soon find out what his team is made of as Brad Johnson rallies the troops. Coxiar fires downfield, caught by Dossie at the 35-yard line. He caught it in traffic, was hit, and the penalty flag is thrown. From the 37, Johnson with a quick pass, caught by Dossie, spins inside the 24, fires near side, and Shannon Baker makes the catch at the four-yard line. From the five-yard line, running backs are in the eye, near side hash marks. Toss sweep to Ampley, following Mike Morris. Lee, touchdown, Florida State. On the 10th play of the drive, Amp Lee does the honors. On their next series, the Gobbler offense gets rejected like Thanksgiving leftovers. Three minutes before the half, plenty of time for Johnson to put it up. Has all the time in the world. Goes it across the middle. Catch made by Dave Roberts at the 45 of Virginia Tech. 
Toward the end zone, going forward is Baker, makes the catch, touchdown! Florida State, what a catch over the shoulder! Shannon Baker puts the foot down and comes up with six points. Then the gutsy junior quarterback decides to take two the old-fashioned way. Runs out of trouble, he may run it. Brad Johnson hurdles to the goal line. He's got the two-point conversion. And Florida State goes into the locker room with a little mo on their side. In the second half, Brad Johnson goes back to the air for some of his 254 yards on the night. Johnson to throw the quick pass across the middle. He's got fire at the goal line. Touchdown, Florida State. Matt Pryor's first touchdown as a Seminole puts the try back on top. After driving all the way to the FSU two-yard line, the FSU D makes a stand. On fourth and one from the two, Errol McCorvey says, not this time. On Tech's next series, it's deja vu for the defense as the Hokies face another fourth and goal. This time, they make good and retake the lead. After a Seminole turnover, the Hokies look downfield and find FSU's number 27. It's picked off by Buckley. He may go. Buckley to the 40. Buckley to the 30. Buckley to the 20. Cuts it to the inside. Buckley hurdling. He waits for the blockers to the middle to the 5. Buckley, touchdown, Florida State. Oh, my. How about that by Terrell Buckley? Is he exciting to watch? Florida State retakes the lead on a defensive jump by Buckley, his third pickoff of the season. But BPI won't die easy. Late in the fourth quarter from the Tribe 25, FSU's dynamic linebacker duo of Marvin Jones and Kirk Carruthers forced the fumble and Errol McCorvey races untouched, 77 yards for the clincher. The Seminoles get beat up, but escape with a 39-28 gut check win over Virginia Tech, and head unbeaten and number two in the nation into the Titanic clash with the Canes in the Orange Bowl. October 6th, the number two ranked Seminoles take their 14 game winning streak south to battle their oldest rival, the number nine ranked Hurricanes of Miami. The cameras of CBS and the second largest crowd ever to pack the Orange Bowl, more than 80,000 fans, witness Florida State dig itself into a huge early hole. We got hurt. We just got nearly got destroyed early in the ball game. You can't play a team like uh, you might can come back on a Virginia Tech 21 to three, but you're not going to beat a team like Miami and get wins 24 to nothing. And the way we played the first quarter, I kept thinking to myself, Is this my ball club? Is that my team jumping off sides? Is that my team uh, in motion? Is that my team pushing off downfield? And uh, I, I uh, so. Uh, yeah, we, we, uh, you can't win doing what we did early in the game. It does make you think it was stage fright, and it was to a certain extent. Seminole miscues prove costly. Before the half, the Tribe offense finally mounts a confidence-building drive. Lawrence Dossie will not be denied his 15th career touchdown. The second half belongs to the Warriors. The rejuvenated FSU defense limits the Canes to only seven points. Freshman Marvin Jones returns home with a vengeance, leading the Knolls with nine solo tackles. The Tribe D makes the big plays necessary to get the ball back into the hands of the offense. And the hands that keep finding the ball belong to Lawrence Dossie. The senior wide receiver snares a career-high 13 receptions, 
good for 160 yards. The best day for a Seminole pass receiver in 21 years. You know, the beginning, the first half, I was kind of disappointed, you know, because we got off to a slow start like we did against Virginia Tech, you know, the week before, and um, things just weren't clicking. But in the second half, you know, we went in there and regrouped, you know. I feel, you know, the team learned something when they came out and played well as they did in the second half. Senior tight end Dave Roberts also puts up some career numbers. Eight catches, including a 19-yard scoring hookup from Casey Weldon. However, the Seminoles' comeback bid runs out of time, and the Hurricanes prevail 31-22. Coach Bobby Bowden's quest for career win number 200 must wait for another day. After a week off, the seventh-ranked Seminoles invade Jordan-Hare Stadium to try and become the first team to ever defeat Coach Pat Dye's Auburn Tigers four games in a row. Coach Bobby Bowden goes for career win number 200 in front of 85,000 rabid fans and an ESPN national audience. In the first quarter, the Florida State defenders come out hunting tiger meat. Casey Weldon's first play of the evening is an indication of great things to come, thanks to this fantastic grab by fullback Edgar Bennett. Tailback Amp Lee gets into the act, slashing for some of his 84 yards on the night. Lawrence Dossie's consecutive game receiving streak is alive and well at 25. However, the nation's fifth-rated defense stiffens, and Richie Andrews gets Florida State on the board. Following the kickoff, Twin Peak Joe Ostazewski and company go on safari. Starting from the FSU 34, the Seminole offense tears up big chunks of Tiger turf en route to the first tribe lead of the game. Six inches away, first down, Weldon's got him lined up. Two tight ends, and here's a handoff to Bennett. He's got a Florida State touchdown. FSU goes on the warpath. Play fakes, drops to throw. Here comes pressure. Comes the pass off to Amp Lee. Lee's got a blocking wall in front. Lee to the 40, to the 35, to the 30. Lee to the 20, Lee to the 15, to the 10, 5. Touchdown, Florida State. Screen pass to Amp Lee. And the Seminoles add six more. A 48-yard screen pass from Casey Weldon. Yeah, I mean, we went over there, and we were mentally ready, and, and we played a great ball game. And, we just made too many mistakes, you know, just killed drives, and we're definitely going to learn from it, and it was a great atmosphere to play in, 85,000, and, you know, I thought we handled ourselves pretty well, except for just, a, you know, like I said, a few mistakes. The second half turns into a mammoth power struggle. However, due in part to FSU penalties and miscues, Auburn finds itself back in the game. The Florida State defense gives its all to the bitter end. And, you know, we played our hearts out. You know, we gave it, we didn't want to leave anything on the field. You know, we wouldn't say we played our best, let it all, let's let it all go. With two seconds left in the game, Auburn steals a victory. FSU's national title hopes are dashed in a game they dominated. That was a terrible loss. I, 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 hadn't, heard, I hadn't had a loss hurt me that much, maybe since uh, the Fiesta, I mean, no, since the 87 when Miami beat us out here. We had the ball game in, in char hand. I thought we played better than they played. And uh, we just, we, I really feel like more than they beat us, we self-destructed.
On October 27th, Windex Blue Skies, Cool Autumn Breezes, A Full House, and a national television audience set a perfect stage for Coach Bobby Bowden's 200th career win. The unlucky victim is the LSU Tigers, making their first trip ever to Tallahassee. The Bayou Bengals commit a fatal faux pas on the opening kickoff. Camp Lee finds both sides of the LSUD to his liking. And the tribe is up fast, seven to nothing. Then the Seminole defense roars. On third and seven, Kirk Carruthers and Bill Reagans get all over the LSU quarterback like ugly on an ape, and big Carl Simpson scarps up the leftovers. We had been improving our whole defense uh, throughout the season, and I felt like that was one of our peak games. Um, uh, personally, I felt real good about my performance, um, kind of got back in the swing of things, and uh, like I said, our defense is uh, improving weekly, and uh, like, uh, I feel that definitely by the end of the season, we will be considered one of the de uh, top defenses in the country. Fullback Edgar Bennett then clears the way for Ampley's second touchdown of the game. On the kickoff, Richie Andrews fulfills a fantasy. And this one's back, way back, and out of there. LSU starts the second quarter by going nowhere fast. Later in the quarter, FSU embarks on a 99-yard Bengal back-breaking drive. On first and 10 from the FSU 20, Weldon heaves it up top for freshman Matt Pryor. On first down, Weldon again bootleg. He runs down toward his right, cocks the yard, throws it downfield, intended for Pryor. Pryor says, he makes the catch at the 25-yard line. Ben Ampley and his frontline warriors take over. From the two now, Weldon ready. He'll send a slot man in motion. Toss sweep comes to Lee. Lee, two to one. Touchdown, Florida State. On basically all my touchdowns, I was untouched. Um, Edgar Bennett made, some, made an excellent block on, on my second touchdown. And Warren, Warren Hart and uh, Reggie Johnson made some uh, key blocks on the third one. Only 45 seconds to go in the half. Plenty of time for Reggie Freeman to unload on quarterback Chad Luke. And just when you thought it was safe to go get a hot dog. And the Seminoles will have three seconds now. Weldon ready, here's the snap on the final play of the first half. Weldon buys time, buys time, rolls toward his left, still has time, throws it back toward his right, toward the end zone. It's gonna be in the air, bounced around. Tiny catch by touchdown, Chad Baker! Baker makes the catch of the in line, keeps the foot in bounds off the deflection at FSU has just really stung LSU. The Tigers drag their tails into the locker room, feeling the crack of a 28-3 first half whipping. In the second stanza, the FSU defense keeps the Tigers at bay. And here comes the pressure. He is hit. Quarterback sack number four, Kirk Carruthers. Oh, boy, he's having some kind of game today, huh? Some talented freshmen get a chance to strut their young stuff.
Junior fullback Paul Moore barrels for six from the six. LSU tries another quarterback with the same result. Well, I was very pleased with our defense. Our defense really got after them good and kept them off the board except for one field goal. And uh, I was very pleased with them. Offensively, uh, we were not as sharp offensively. We made too many mistakes to be playing at home in front of our crowd. But I think that's to be expected because we've been in a very adverse situation against Miami and against Auburn. And I think you can't get up every week. But I, I, the, the thing that saved us, I thought, was the intensity of our defense. Bowden tries to call off the dogs, but a cat by the name of Felix won't even think about letting dead tigers lie. He's going to toss it back to his tailback, and this is Felix Harris. Harris to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Florida State. Oh, Felix Harris on third and 10 gets the call, and he goes down the sideline untouched. Final score, FSU 42, Louisiana State 3. Florida State makes gumbo out of their guests from the SEC. Coach Bobby Bowden notches his milestone 200th career victory, and the rapidly improving Seminoles remain in the chase for some major bowl game glory. on the winning track, the 12th-ranked Seminoles travel to sold-out Williams-Brice Stadium in Columbia for a November 3rd matchup with South Carolina. On the Gamecocks' first possession, cornerback Terrell Buckley sets the Florida State defensive tone for the day, nabbing his fifth interception of the year. With the offensive line opening monstrous holes, the Tribe batters the SC defenders via the ground assault. FSU ball carriers pile up 344 yards rushing, led by freshman Sean Jackson's 119 yards on just 12 carries. Tailback Amp Lee zigzags his way to 94 yards and three touchdowns. No less than six Florida State running backs pummel the Gamecock front line. Yes, it makes us proud to see the running backs running down the field. And you got your man on the ground, the running back just running through big holes. Quarterback Casey Weldon compliments the ground attack by completing 12 of 20 passes, good for 110 yards. Richie Andrews boots two long field goals and continues his thunderous kickoffs. Defensively, the Warriors smother any semblance of a Carolina offense. Senior linebacker Anthony Moss and the sack pack rock the Gamecock quarterbacks seven times for losses. You know, I believe we pretty much dominated the game. Um, we had a good game plan, so we was able to improvise on a lot of what they were doing. This one is over early as the bowl hungry Knowles annihilate South Carolina 41 to 10. Now, man, what's, it's going to be very important the tempo you hit this field, the game with. It's going to be very important. In other words, you can go out there and make it tough on them, or you can go out there and make it easy on them. First down, Stoffel with three wide receivers, looks right, throws the ball. It's picked off by Buckley. He could go down to the 30, to the 40. He's dancing to the 50, to the 30-yard line. Terrell Buckley will score his third touchdown of the season. Now, if you go out there and make it easy on them, they'll get better and better, and you'll get embarrassed. Or you can go out there and just knock the heck out of them. 
I'm talking about take it to them. Remember, from snap of the ball to the whistle, not after, not after the whistle. I'm talking about really take it to them physically, knock them out of there, and then we can have fun. Weldon, out of the eye, set play fakes, drops to throw. Has plenty of time this time. Throws far corner toward Dossie, makes the catch of the two, one, touchdown Florida State. Now we gotta have some catches today. I gotta have great catches. Our offense is not very good without great catches. So when we pick your name out and throw you a pass, you catch that football if you have to lay flat on the ground with it. From the 37, first down. This time, a one-handed catch by Dossie <laughs> to the 25, and he was spinning around to make the catch. Offense, whatever we call, make it go. Whatever we call, make it go. Everybody block your man. Offensive line, I hope you can, in, I hope you can uh, control that line of scrimmage like you did last week. Then, then that makes things mighty nice. Offensive line, control that line of scrimmage. We go to the fourth quarter, handoff goes to Pinkney, Pinkney to the 30, to the 25, Pinkney to the 20, 15, 10, 5. He's got a Florida State touchdown. Dear Father, thank you for this another day, and thank you for letting us play football. Thank you for the healthy bodies you've given us. There are thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in hospitals today <clears throat> that can't play. Thank you for letting us. Help us, we pray for two things. Number one, we pray that we can do our best. Pray that nobody gets hurt, either, either ball club. Give our coaches wisdom, and us wisdom in making decisions. What you've given us, we're gonna give back to you today. These things we pray in thy name, amen. The setting, a picture-perfect day in city beautiful Orlando. The ninth-ranked Seminoles face yet another bunch of Tigers, this time from Memphis State University in the inaugural Texaco Star Classic. The Tigers try to draw first blood. is tied in in motion. Hands the ball off to Porter. Fumble football. Diving on an FSU. The Seminoles have come up with it. Later in the first frame, the Seminole offense shifts into overdrive. A Dossie to the near side. Weldon will throw. Here comes pressure. It's rid of the ball. He's got Dossie. Makes the catch at the 24-yard line. Weldon throws the ball to Amp Lee. Lee sidesteps the tackle to the 20. Lee to the 15, to the 14. He's got a first down. Handoff goes to Lee. Lee to the one. Touchdown, Florida State. Amp Lee. Memphis State tries to answer. The play proves to be a double whammy as the Tiger quarterback is done for the day. The Tribe continues to move the ball at will. Casey Weldon fires three first-half scoring strikes, upping his season total to 10. With his second TD grab of the day, Lawrence Dossie moves into fourth place on the all-time FSU scoring list. It was it was fun, you know, to go out and have a good game like I had against Memphis State, you know. It would be even greater if they wouldn't have called my other two touchdowns back, right? but, you know, the coaches were calling the right plays, and Case was just seeing the hit me at the right time. The Warrior defense ensures that Florida State has this one well in hand by intermission. <laughs> In the second half, Dossie recaptures some glory days. It is Dossie. Dossie to the 20, needs a block. He's to the 30. Dossie cuts it back to the middle of the field to the 45, to the 50. Dossie to the 40, makes a cut inside. Dossie to the 25, and he's pulled off down to the 19 yard line.
I like running. For sure, it reminded me of my high school days as a running back. And if I could have got it in, it would have made even think, it made everything even better. Richie Andrews takes care of business from 41 yards to cap off the scoring for the day. The drive defense continually turns back the Tiger attack, holding the Memphis State offense to just 223 total yards and keeping the boys from Tennessee out of the end zone. We had a real, real strong defensive effort on we give up the one big play on the first drive, but then we were able to have a, a great goal line stand, cause a turnover down there early in the game that really swung the momentum back in our favor after they had you know, run the ball down the field on us. FSU christens the Texaco Star Classic with a 35-3 drilling of Memphis State and looks to move up in the polls prior to the big December 1st showdown with the Gators. Amen. Now, the worst thing you can do tonight is get a penalty. You probably can't make a mistake as big as a penalty will be. So don't let anything distract you into a penalty. Do not jaw with them. I've talked about fighting. Now, look, amen. There's nobody in here that thinks that I said don't be aggressive, is it? But I said don't fight. What's fighting got to do with football? Who fights? People who fight are people who just got licked. And their response is to get up and swing. So don't, don't fight. You're just telling somebody that you just got whipped. So no penalties. That's out of, that's out of the question. Now, offense, be ready for anything. <clears throat> be ready for anything. We'll either come out firing that ball. We might, I might try to run the ball just to see how tough they are physically. Oh, I'm going to probably mix it. <laughs> Lord, don't, anything we call, we, again, this, this ain't one of them holdback games. <clears throat> we will not play scared. We will not play scared. I mean, if we have to throw that ball off our one-inch line, we'll throw it off our one-inch line. You make it go. December 1st, 1990, a national television audience plus an all-time record Dope Campbell crowd of more than 63,000 focused their attention on Steve Spurrier's sixth-ranked Florida Gators and the eighth-ranked Seminoles of Florida State. FSU is trying to make it four in a row over UF in a series that has been one of streaks. Coach Bobby Bowden wants to prove to the country that his team belongs among the best. And the Tribe looks to stop Florida from becoming the first Gator team to get 10 wins in a season. A win over a top-notch opponent will help the Seminoles continue their skyward climb in the polls.
Weldon will spread out to his right and throw his first pass. Pops the arm. Now he wants to go long. Downfield. He's got Dorsey. Wide open. He makes the catch in the 420. To the 15. To the 10. And it's a Florida State. Touchdown. Touchdown FSU. Lawrence Dorsey outran the coverage. And Weldon led him at full stride. 76 yards. They weren't double teaming Dossie, but you know they were. They they had a coverage where they would have two guys over there and uh, on both sides really, and and so I was you know I was kind of worried at first, but then I saw a snap of the ball, of Fame running back, and I knew it was going to be three deep like we'd wanted, and uh, and he bit on the fake just like we'd practiced all week, and you know he's a bit he tries to go for the big play and you know we got him again this year on it, so. Uh, you know, we, we knew we could get them early. They'd be excited, and they jumped. And uh, when I made the pump and I saw, you know, out of the corner of my eye, Will White jump it, too, I just knew all I'd do is lay it out there and let Dawson get it. All-American Lawrence Dawson ties Ron Sellers' mark for consecutive game catches of 30. And the 76-yard bomb triggers a massive celebration. The shell-shocked Gators start from their own 23. He is hit, loses the football, bouncing around. It is picked up by FSU. McClendon fumbles, FSU recovers. Howard Dinkins caught it in the air. And the Seminoles force a Gator turnover. Three plays later, a Richie Andrews 47-yard field goal puts the tribe up 10 to nothing. After a UF field goal, FSU faces a fourth and one at their own 41. Bobby Bowden calls a strategic gem. The double tight end shift earns a Gator jump start, and the Tribe offense kicks it into overdrive. Desperate for points, UF mounts a drive. But on the first play of the second quarter, senior safety Bill Reagans gets up close and personal with quarterback Shane Matthews. The Gator offense self-destructs. With Florida State leading 17 to 10 late in the first half, Casey Weldon fires the tribe downfield. The junior from Tallahassee would enjoy a career performance, completing 13 of 23 passes, good for 325 yards and two touchdowns. And the handoff goes to Bennett off right guard. Touchdown, Florida State. Is what Bobby Bowden ordered. Well, I take the ball, what? use the clock, get points on the board, and the Seminoles go 70 yards, and Bennett takes it in. And I tell you what, on that touchdown, right there, color that one, Reggie Johnson, Kevin Mancini, and Mike Morris. On the offensive line, did a great job of blocking. I read the block, I bounced it outside, and I ran over one guy to get in. It was sweet, real sweet. Fullback Edgar Bennett finds the end zone thanks to a dominating FSU front line. The two teams go into the locker room with the Seminoles up by 14. On FSU's first possession of the second half, Weldon looks for a sure-handed Swanee Swifty. Six plays later, the Tribe earns a big lead and pandemonium hits Tallahassee.
On their next possession, the Gators are licking their chops at the FSU 46. But junior Kirk Carruthers provides the bite. Later in the third quarter, Ampley demonstrates the offensive balance that earmarks the 1990 Tribe offense. The Chipley sophomore would wreak havoc on the Florida defenders, slashing his way to 147 yards. And the 16-yard Gator Gutbuster keeps the reptile visitors at a safe distance. The Gators try to rally, but the Seminole defense is up for the challenge. We just um, prepared ourselves during our week off to go out there and take control of the game early. And uh, I think that um, the defense um, established ourselves. I mean, that's all we have, we we've been hearing about is uh, Florida's uh, um, pretty, you know, they have a pretty good quarterback and, you know, how they move the ball. So it was just up to us to go out and um, take control of those guys, and I think we did a pretty good job of that. In the fourth, Lawrence Dossey turns a routine pass pattern into a game breaker. Ampley scoots around left end for the final two, and Florida State puts the home crowd into a frenzy. The Seminole offense rips apart the top-ranked Gator defense for 487 yards and a final score of 45 to 30. Florida State continues its assault on the national polls, moving to the number six spot as Bobby Bowden records lifetime win number 204. I thought if we won the ball game, it would be a low-scoring game. Uh, maybe 17 to 14 or something like that. I had no idea it would be a shootout. December 28th at Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. The nation's two winningest active head coaches match might and wits in the inaugural Blockbuster Bowl. Bobby Bowden is the winningest bowl coach in NCAA history and wants to make it an astounding nine bowls in a row without a loss. The sixth-ranked Seminoles face legendary Joe Paterno's seventh-ranked Penn State team that features all the trademarks of that proud, rugged program. A team that commanded nationwide respect after it humbled top-ranked Notre Dame at South Bend and steamrolled into South Florida, riding a nine-game winning streak. Well, the special meaning to playing in the Blockbuster Bowl is, number one, it was a bowl in the state of Florida where we survived. And, uh, they ch and you had a chance at an opponent like Penn State University, which is one of the great universities in the nation. So it had a chance of, of uh, getting the nation involved, a North versus South, Florida State versus Penn State, two independents that had so much in common. I just thought it made a great rivalry, and I was glad we were able to inaugurate the Blockbuster Bowl, who did a great job of, of, of putting on a bowl for the first year. On the second play of the game, it's Air Weldon to Reggie Johnson for 29. Richie Andrews caps the drive with a 41-yarder, and FSU strikes first. Penn State punts on their first possession, and it's showtime for number 27. It still travels to the 40. It's going to bounce, and Buckley picks it up at the 47. Looks for the wall to develop. Buckley giving yardage. Buckley giving yardage. He'll get the corner turn. The wall is set. Buckley down the sideline. Buckley may go. He's to the 30-yard line. He's to the 20-yard line. He is back to the 15-yard line. Cheryl Buckley may have run 150 yards. Listen to the crowd. The Knolls are knocking on the door. Deep in Lion Country, Weldon shows his versatility. <music> A 
Camp Lee follows great blocking, and the Seminoles streak to a 10 to nothing lead. With the first quarter winding down, Penn State breaks a big one to get the Nittany Lions back in the hunt. On Florida State's next possession, Weldon picks apart the nation's 10th rated defense. Lee gets the final five and the Knolls are back on top by ten. As a team, we, we really didn't play as well as we could have. We wasn't uh, as sharp offensively as we were in the Florida game, but uh, personally, I don't feel as, I, as though I played the best game I could have played. Um, I wasn't as, as effective as I would have liked to have been. But, uh, you know, I have to give credit to Penn State because they have a tough defense. Uh, they were by far the best defensive team that I played all year. Two determined defenses then dominate the action. FSU leads 17 to 7. Penn State starts the second half scoring with a 32 yard field goal, closing the gap to 7. After the Lion field goal, it's Air Weldon at the control. One second down from the five, Weldon goes solo. Out of the pro set, it's Bennett and Lee. Bootleg play by Weldon. He may takes the pass. He'll run. Touchdown, FSU. Weldon with a pump fake on the bootleg run. And Casey Weldon has Florida State in for the touchdown. In the fourth quarter, Paterno goes to strong arm senior quarterback Tom Bill. And the move pays off. Late in the game, a blitzing Warrior D continually thwarts Nittany Lion advances. Our goal was to stop the running game. Once we started the running game, we felt that our secondary would, would stop the passing game. And that was, that's what, ha what happened. With some time still remaining and FSU's offense facing a third down, Bowden is again unpredictable and gets the game-clinching first down and runs out the clock. All the key factors, I think, number one, our, our, our kicking team uh, did not break down. Our kicking, our kicking game was as good as theirs because they had a great kicking game. I thought they equaled out. Uh, they had, we had a good punt return to suffer score. They had a good punt return. Uh, and, and, uh, and then I thought our defense made big plays, more big plays than theirs did. 
and uh, then our offense uh, moved the ball and kept the ball a little bit more than theirs did. I thought that was a big factor. Bobby Bowden continues his amazing bowl game wizardry and beats Joe Paterno for the first time in his illustrious career. In a thriller, it's Florida State 24 to 17. With a 10 and 2 record, Florida State finished in the nation's top four for the fourth year in a row. And the truly amazing thing is that it was done with just a handful of seniors. Bobby Bowden's Seminoles overcame the numbing adversity of a midseason giveaway at Auburn to finish the season with six straight wins, winning 10 games in a season for the fourth straight year. If they ever decide to carve out a Mount Rushmore of collegiate coaches, you can be sure that Bobby Bowden's monumental accomplishments have earned him a place on that hillside with the all-time greats. 205 career wins and counting. Florida State again finishing the season among the nation's elite. Yes, 1990 was indeed a blockbuster season.